So in the majority, you'll be used to defining a sequence using its nth term. And ordinarily, we would write this nth term as un equals something like 3n minus 2, for example. And what's good about this is that um, if I know a sequence's nth term, then I could figure out whatever term I want. So I could say I could substitute in uh, 1,000, and that will give me the 1,000th term in the sequence. Or I could substitute in the 5,000th term, and I get the 5,000th five term in the sequence. OK, so the nth term, if you know it, is great. But not all sequences can be determined or written as what we would be referred with we would refer to as a position to term rule. Okay, so um, we would refer to the nth term as a position to term rule because once you know the position in the sequence, you can work out the term. However, there are sequences that are defined by a term to term rule. Okay, and that is where something referring to a, an inductive definition comes from. OK, so that's your nth term part. OK, now an inductive definition has two pieces. A first term, OK, which we will say is u1, which might be equal to 3 for example, and a recurrence relation. Now, the recurrence relation is an instruction and tells you how to get to the next term. So if we say that the current term is un, OK? Now, I know we're using un here up here as the nth term, and we're kind of using it here as well. So for the nth term that we get to, OK, in the sequence, so let's say this is my nth term, the nth term in the sequence that I've arrived at. I'm going to multiply whatever that value is by 2, and then subtract 3, and that will give me the next term in the sequence. So the next term in the sequence, un plus 1, is two lots of the previous term take away 3. That is what that is saying. And this, together, is an inductive definition. Because just by itself, that bit or that bit, neither of those give you a sequence. You need both pieces to create this inductive definition. OK, so this word inductive means one after the other. And this is what we refer to as a term to term rule, term by term rule. OK, because I need the previous term to know what the next term is. OK, and so from that you can go, right, well, the next term, u2, will be two lots of the previous term, take away 3. So 6, take away 3, oh, that's 3 as well. It just so happens. OK? Now, this sequence here, as you work through, right, so u3 would be 2 lots of the previous term, take away 3, which is 3 again. So this is actually generating what would be referred to as a constant sequence. OK? Because it is well, constant. It's none changing. Now, that's not true of all recurrence relations uh, or inductive definitions, because I could just change this very, very slightly. OK. To a 4. And then I've got, well, the second term is 2 lots of the previous term take away 4, and that's 2. So the third term is two lots of the previous term, take away four, which is zero. OK, and so on and so forth. And the sequence is going three, two, zero. The next one is two lots of zero, take away four, so minus four. OK.
Okay. Now these sequences, 3, 2, 0, minus 4, do not have to follow this uh, pattern of subtracting 1 each time, for example, or just multiplying by 2. They don't have to follow that. So they can be a bit all over the place. Okay? And subsequently, because we only know it as a term-to-term -term rule, I can't just go and say, right, what's the hundredth term? Up here for the nth term, yes, I could. But for this, I can't. I can't just be asked what's the hundredth term without working out the first hundred terms in the sequence. Okay, So it's one of the drawbacks of an inductive definition. But it's another way of generating a sequence.